Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. And friends, today I want to talk about a publication that was uh, released in uh, mid-2023. And um, here is the article on the screen. And I also put up a link in the description so that you can read it for yourself. This research publication suggests that targeting AHR uh, could be a promising avenue for developing new strategies to address the persistence of HIV in the reservoirs basically targeting latent HIV, offering potential benefits for people living with HIV on uh, ART. And in this video, I'm going to explain in detail what is AHR and how this works so that you can visualize potential uh, of uh, various treatments that can be done using this knowledge. That's it. Let's get started. <music> Welcome back friends. Aryl hydrocarbon receptor or AHR is a ligand activated transcription factor that plays a crucial role in various physiological and pathological process. Now there are a lot of technical terms out here which stumped me as well so I'm going to clarify everything in this video okay. So just follow with me trust me it's all going to be clear. AHR is a multifunctional protein that contributes to detoxification, immune regulation, and overall cellular homeostasis. A ligand-activated transcription factor is a protein that regulates the expression of genes in response to binding of a specific signaling molecule known as a ligand. This type of trans uh, transcription factor plays a key role in transmitting signals from the cell's external environment to the nucleus where it modulates the transcription of target genes. AHR is a protein that resides in the cytoplasm of cells when it's not activated. It consists of several functional domains including a ligand binding domain and a DNA binding domain. AHR is activated by binding to specific ligands, many of which are environmental pollutants such as dioxins, polycyclic uh, aromatic uh, hydrocarbons or PAH, and certain drugs. So you can even have drugs which are specific to uh, uh, ARH so that it can bind to ARH and uh, subdue it. ARH is a crucial player in the body's defense against environmental toxins and pollutants. When activated by ligands, including certain pollutants like dioxins and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon or even the cigarette smoke that one inhales, AHR initiates the transcription of genes involved in detoxification process. These genes encode enzymes that metabolize and eliminate harmful substances aiding in the detoxification of xenobiotics or foreign chemicals that might pose a threat to the body. AHR is involved in the development and functioning of immune cells including regulatory T cells which play a key role uh, in maintaining immune tolerance and uh, preventing excessive immune responses. Regulative, uh, regulative uh, T cells are also called as Tregs with a capital T. AHR com uh, contributes to the maintenance of uh, cellular homeostasis by participating in processes such as cell cycle regulation and apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. It has been implicated in the regulation of cellular growth, differentiation, and survival, contributing to the overall tissue health. When AHR is known for its, uh, while AHR is known for its activation by environmental pollutants, it also responds to endogenous ligands, uh, which are naturally occurring molecules produced within the body. So it does not depend on just us inhaling toxins or something, but even uh, molecules within the body, which are produced by our own body, uh, can trigger AHR. Uh, endogenous ligands for AHR include certain dietary compounds and metabolites derived from cellular process, suggesting a role for AHR in responding to internal signals as well, apart from external signals. Now let's look at its partner, which is called HIC1. HIC1 is a transcriptional repressor, meaning it inhibits the transcription, which is the synthesis of RNA uh, from DNA of target genes. It acts by recruiting co-repressor complexes and modifying the chromatin structure 
uh, of the DNA and making the DNA less accessible for transcription. HIC1 is involved in the regulation of DNA methylation and epigenetic modification that can influence gene expression. It participates in maintaining proper DNA methylation patterns in cells. And now you'll be saying, Raj, I'm just an ordinary guy. What is DNA methylation? Well, I would like to explain that to you. First, you need to understand DNA methylation in order to understand the rest of the video. So I would say that DNA methylation is like a tiny chemical tag added to the DNA molecule. This tag is called a methyl group. Imagine DNA molecule as a string of letters. We already know that there are just four alphabets in that string, A, T, C, G in various sequences. In a specific sequence where there's a cytosine or C next to a guanine or G, a methyl group can be added to the C. This specific pairing is called CPG, where we have capital C, small p, and capital G, dinucleotide. Enzymes like little molecular workers are responsible for adding the methyl group to the cytosine. These enzymes are called DNA methyl transferases or DNMTs. And DNA methylation is like a molecular switch that can turn genes on or off. When a gene is methylated, it's often turned off. And when it is not methylated or when it is demethylated, it's usually active. DNA methylation, methylation is crucial for controlling how genes work. It helps cells specialize during uh, development, maintain stability in the genome, and uh, plays an important role in various processes in the body. Suffice to say, methylation can turn off genes, demethylation can turn on gene. HIC1 regulates DNA methylation. HIC1 is widely recognized as a tumor suppressor gene. It's often found to be epigenetically silenced in various cancers, leading to a loss of tumor suppressive capability in those cells. And cancer represses HIC1 production and prevents the ability of the cell to identify uh, that it is defective and to initiate apoptosis to self-destruct. This helps cancer to grow fast. DNA methylation can act as a gene silencer. When methyl groups are added to the promoter region of a gene, it can prevent the binding of uh, transcription factors and other regulatory proteins, hindering the initiation of transcription. DNA methylation patterns can be passed on from one generation of cell to the next generation during cell division, and this inheritance of epigenetic information contributes to the stability of cellular identity. Now I'm coming to the press release that I showed you in the earlier part. In that press release or the paper, research paper that was released in June 2022, they gave us a small abstract of it. Researchers in Montreal and Brussels identified the absence or weakness of AHR as a molecule that allows HIV to evade the immune system and stay dormant. AHR is a transcription factor, as I explained to you. The team used CRISPR-Cas9 to knock out expression of AHR, and this in turn led to non-activation of HIC1, which is also a transcription factor known to inhibit HIV replication. This finding can be part of shock and kill uh, type of uh, therapy to remove latent HIV reservoirs. And that is the approach that we are uh, talking about. So if... Um, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 can be used to knock out expression of AHR, which in turn can lead to the non-activation of HIC1, uh, which is also a transcription factor known to in inhibit HIV replication. You can then imagine that those cells which are currently domin uh, dormant, where uh, HIV replication is inhibited, are going to be released, and they will start replicating. This makes the, those cells visible to the uh, immune system, and marked for destruction. And this is how the latent HIV pools or dormant pools can be reactivated, targeted, and destroyed, thereby shrinking the dormant pools. It is the, uh, it is the presence of these dormant pools that causes HIV to surge back again when ART is stopped. But if we were to light up all these dormant pools by uh, removing the uh, inhibition of HIV replication, then uh, we can actually uh, contemplate the possibility of removing all the latent HIV so that once ART finishes its job, there will be no longer HIV in the person's body. 
hypothetically. So that's where this is going. So friends, I hope uh, you found this uh, video instructional because as we keep on going into more and more uh, deeper topics, it's going to get a bit more technical. But I am thinking that when I bring all this information to you, uh, it gives you motivation that scientists are working on all possible angles uh, to take care of HIV. So the way I look at um, uh, tackling the HIV problem is one is keeping the viral load le level very low for which we already have solutions ART. And in ART also we got various combinations available so that you can modify your combination uh, in case any of those components becomes uh, ineffective or if you have side effects. So ART is already a stable body of knowledge and there are products that are already available. The next problem we need to crack is the dormant pools which come up again which forces you to con constantly stay on ART. So the shock and kill approach is to shock those uh, dormant uh, cells uh, and uh, reactivate their replication uh, so that uh, the immune system can handle it and destroy, mark it for destruction and uh, kill those cells and thereby remove the latent pools. Once the latent pools are removed, then ART can solve the issue and after a point of time, ART can potentially be stopped and there will be no more uh, resurgence of the virus. So that's, that's the way I visualize it. And hopefully one of these days we, we would be able to get the authors of these kind of research papers to share their enthusiasm and vision of how their um, findings can help uh, bring an eventual cure for HIV. Well, friends, that is the first, this is the first video of 2023 for you guys. I hope you liked it. And if you like it, please press a like out there, which helps the YouTube algorithms and helps the channel. And I would like to specifically thank our Patreons and our members for supporting this channel and helping me continue to bring these kind of uh, articles. Right now, I'm still working off free articles that are available to me uh, because subscription to most gen journals is expensive. But we are still finding a lot of information for you guys. Thanks for your support. We now have a website for us. We now have an email for the channel. Please feel free to write to me. Uh, in our email address and please feel free to check out our blog posts. I keep on putting new blogs there. Uh, we have a free HIV booklet in English, French and Hindi. You can go to our website and download it uh, and read it for yourself. And I'm also looking for volunteers who can translate our blog into the French and Hindi components. Uh, please reach out to me uh, at uh, raj at sharetrek.com or you can go to the website and use the contact form to reach me and uh, you can help by uh, translating our articles so that people who do not speak English and probably speak French or Hindi or Arabic or any other language can still get the benefit. With that said, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end. I would like to wish you all a very, very happy new year, great career, great health, and everything that you have ever dreamed of. I hope you get a step closer to that in the new year. You achieve quite a few of those objectives in the new year, and you stay on the straight and narrow in the new year. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.